The next one is full attention, full blown attention, the type that we use in transformers. What is wrong with fully convolutional type of architectures? We saw that they have a limited receptive field. Even if you go very deep, there are some papers showing that your receptive field is gonna stay limited. The theoretical one is gonna increase, but the actual computational one, which is coming out of taking the gradient of one of, your, one of the pixels in the output with respect to the pixels in the input, that one is gonna give you an approximation for the actual receptive field. That one is limited regardless of the depth. The paper, the method is called SET. You're gonna hear that a lot in the future. What is cool about attention and transformers, we saw this when we were analyzing and comparing uh, vision transformers to convolutional neural networks and ResNets. We saw that they see differently. One of them sees locally, the other one sees globally. We went through a paper on that. So maybe because you are able to look globally, these are better architectures to work with, and they're going to preserve local information at the same time. We saw that from one layer to the next one, you were preserving local information. At the same time, they have global receptive field. While making a prediction, they are looking at every single other pixel in your image. These are a reminder of the architecture for vision transformers. You are going to look at your image in patches. Each patch is going to correspond to a word if you want to have an analogy to languages. Then first of all, you're going to project these, turn them into vectors. These are your embeddings. The next one is you're going to need to know what is the location of this patch. Is this the first patch? Is this the second patch you're looking at? Is this the last patch? You're going to have some positional embeddings. You push them through a bunch of transformer layers, which are multi-head attention, MLP, and shortcut connections. This is for the encoder. The decoder part is still a convolution. And we can take the output of your decoder, which is an attention, uh, because you were looking at your pixels, your patches were of size 16 by 16. What you're going to get out of this is going to have a height and a width divided by 256, which is 16 times 16. You can first reshape that because convolutions like tensors, and then you can do your upsampling from one layer to the next one, and then do your final prediction per pixel prediction. So your decoder is still a convolution. Your encoder is a transformer, or you can have multiple layers of aggregation. We saw this, this is useful. For instance, this layer here corresponds to Z6. So it's the sixth layer. Z12 is the 12th layer or the output of the 12th layer of your transformer. And this is the last guy. You reshape them the same way that you reshaped here because your convolutions like tensors. They don't like sequences of vectors. And then you can just add them up. This is similar to those UNet type of architectures. You're gonna end up with a bunch of feature maps. You convolve it one last time to give you your predictions. And then you write down your loss per pixel prediction loss. Cross entropy. I think I'm going to stop here. And uh, for those of you who have questions, I'll be around.